Hello and welcome to Raju Notes channel, your pit stop for weekly current affairs updates. The updates tailor made for students taking all kinds of competitive exams like UPSC, civils, defense, and placement interviews. Please subscribe to the channel and stay updated every Sunday. Bitcoin completes its halving this week. Bitcoin has completed its halving, a process that happens roughly every four years this week. Cryptocurrency data and analysis company CoinGecko has said, Halving is designed to cut the rate at which new Bitcoins are created. The rewards miners receive for creating new tokens are halved under this process, making it more expensive for them to put new Bitcoins into circulation. Indian Navy conducts exercise Purvi Leher on East Coast. The exercise aimed at validation of procedures towards assessment of the Indian Navy's preparedness to meet maritime security challenges in the region. It was conducted in multiple phases, including combat training in a realistic scenario during a tactical phase and the successful conduct of various firings during weapon phase towards reaffirming the Indian Navy's capabilities to deliver ordnance on target. With the operation of aircraft from diverse locations, a near-continuous maritime domain awareness was maintained throughout the area of operations. In addition to the participation of assets from Eastern Naval Command, the exercise also witnessed the participation of assets from Indian Air Force, Andaman and Nicobar Command and Coast Guard, indicating a very high degree of interoperability amongst the services. The University Grants Commission UGC has announced that four-year bachelor's degree holders can now directly appear for NET and pursue PhD in any subject. The candidates should have minimum of 75% marks in aggregate or its equivalent grade in a point scale wherein the grading system is followed. Such candidates are allowed to appear in a subject in which they want to pursue a PhD irrespective of the discipline in which they have obtained the four years bachelor degree. At present, a NET candidate requires a master's degree with minimum of 55% marks. President Draupadi Murmu presented the Padma Awards at a civil investor ceremony at Rashtrapati Bhavan, New Delhi this week. President Murmu conferred the Padma Vibhushan on former Vice President M. Venka and Naidu and Bharatanatyam dancer Dr. Padma Subramanyam. The Padma Vibhushan Awards will be given to Bindeshwar Pathak posthumously. Actor Mithun Chakravarti and singer Usha Uttup received the Padma Bhushan Award. The other Padma Bhushan awardees including philanthropist Dr. Sitaram Jindal, cardiologist Dr. Tejas Madhusudan Patil and former Uttar Pradesh Governor Ram Nayak. Padma Awards, one of the highest civilian awards of the country, are conferred in three categories Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Shri for the exceptional and distinguished service. 17 year old Gukesh D creates history, becomes youngest world chess championship contender. India's 17 year old chess grandmaster Gukesh D won FIDE candidate. 2024 in Canada by accumulating 9 points in 14 rounds. He created history by becoming the youngest chess player to win FIDE candidates. He is the second Indian after 5-time world champion Vishwanath Anand to win the competition. With the win, Gukesh D has become the youngest ever world chess championship contender. President Mohammad Moizu's party wins Maldives' parliamentary election. Maldivian President Mohammad Moizu, People's National Congress, won the parliamentary election on Sunday this week. It won 66 out of 86 seats declared. According to the Elections Commissions of Maldives results, the election was seen as a litmus test for pro-China leader whose policies are being closely watched by both India and China amidst regional power dynamics. The United States House of Representatives passed a $95 billion legislative package providing security assistance to Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan. The Senate is expected to take up the bill for passage this coming week. 
President Joe Biden has promised to sign a package as soon as he gets it. The bills provide for $60.84 billion to address the conflict in Ukraine, including $23 billion to replenish US weapons, stocks and facilities, $26 billion for Israel, including $9.1 billion for humanitarian aid in Gaza, and $8.12 billion for Indo-Pacific region, including Taiwan. Russian spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said that the package would make United States richer, further ruin Ukraine and result in death of even more Ukrainians. What is nomophobia? The term nomophobia is used to describe psychological condition when a person has a fear of being detached from mobile phone connectivity. The term was coined in 2008 in UK from the phrase no mobile phone phobia. Its symptoms include anxiety, respiratory alterations, trembling, precipitation, agitation, disorientation and tachycardia. Nomophobia can lead to a heightened sense of unease and panic. What is Bha? A new shoe sizing system proposed for Indians. A project for developing an Indian sizing system for footwear named Bha to represent Bharat has been proposed. Upon implementation, Bha will replace the UK and European and US sizing system. Bha proposes 8 footwear sizes. It will be wider at its grip than the footwear currently available commercially as Indians feet were found to be wider than those of European or Americans. European Union has adopted new visa rules that will allow frequent travellers from India to apply for multiple entry Schengen visa with longer validity. Easing travels to 29 European countries, Schengen visas allow the holders to travel freely in the Schengen area for short stay of a maximum of 90 days or any 180-day period. The visas are not proposed bound but they do not grant the right to work. The Shenzhen area consists of 29 European countries, of which 25 are European Union states. The European Union states covered by Shenzhen area are Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Germany, Estonia, Greece, Spain, France, Italy, Lativa, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Hungary, Malta, the Netherlands, Austria, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Slovakia, Slovakia, Finland and Sweden. Defence Research and Development Organisation DRDO has successfully developed the lightest bulletproof jacket in the country for protection against highest threat level 6 of BIS ammunition. Recently, this bulletproof jacket was successfully tested at TBRL Chandigarh. Ministry of Defence in a statement said, this jacket is based upon new design approach where novel material along with new processes have been used. It added that the front hard armor panel HAP of this jacket defeats multiple hits. The ergonomically designed front hap is made up of monolithic ceramic plate with polymer backing which enhances the wearability and comfort during the operations. India's cyber security industry is making a significant impact at the ongoing Gulf Information Security Expo and Conference GISEC 2024 conference in Dubai. The Data Security Council of India DSCI has brought together 22 Indian companies to showcase the nation's growing expertise in this critical field. This participation underscores India's remarkable progress in cyber security fueled by surge in startups supported by both government and industry initiatives. These efforts have resulted in increased international market traction. India's cyber security sector benefits from several factors including government support from startups, utilization of remote sales models to expand global reach and to focus on automation of product integration. United Kingdom Parliament has passed Rwanda Asylum Law that will allow the government to send asylum seekers to Rwanda for their claims to be considered by the East African nation. 
British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak promised yesterday to start sending asylum seekers to Rwanda within 10 to 12 weeks as the upper house of the parliament finally passed the required legislation. Earlier, it was delayed for weeks by attempts to alter the plan. Tens of thousands of migrants, many fleeing wars and poverty in Africa, West Asia and Asia have reached Britain in recent years by crossing the English Channel in small boats on risky journeys organized by people smuggling gangs. The 10th round of India-Japan consultations on disarmament, non-proliferation and export control was held in Tokyo last week. The two sides exchanged views on developments in the area of disarmament and non-proliferation relating to nuclear, chemical and biological domains, outer space security, non-proliferation issues, conventional weapons and export control. The Indian delegation was led by Joint Secretary, Disarmament and International Security Affairs, Ministry of External Affairs, Mountpuli Siwai. The Japanese delegation was led by Director General of Disarmament, Non-Proliferation and Science Department, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Katsuro Kitagawa. Such discussions were also held between India and South Korea on 26th of this month. Papua New Guinea appoints first defense advisor to India. Papua New Guinea has appointed Colonel Edison Napio as the first defense advisor to India, marking a significant diplomatic move. Colonel Napio will serve as a crucial link between Papua New Guinea government and military in their interactions with India. This appointment strengthens the ties between the two nations and enhances cooperation in defense matters. Indian and Russian firm awarded management of Sri Lankan airport. An Indian and a Russian firm will take over management of Mattatala Rajapaksha International Airport in Sri Lanka. Once dubbed by Forbes as the world's emptiest international airport, the facility will be managed for 30 years by Shaurya Aeronautical's Private Limited and airports of regions built at a cost of $209 million. The airport was funded through a Chinese commercial loan. The United States and China held a series of meetings in Beijing this week, with both sides drawing red lines for each other. The countries agreed to continue working towards a certain issues, moving forward on repairing bilateral ties. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is on a three-day visit to China, met President Xi Jinping, Foreign Minister Wang Yi and other senior Chinese officials. Mr. Blinken told his host that resolving the cases of U.S. citizens who have been wrongfully detained or subjected to exit bans in China were a top priority. The Secretary also reiterated that U.S. will continue to take necessary action to defend their interests and values and those of their allies and partners. Mr. Blinken also raised concerns about erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy and China's human rights violation in Xinjiang and Tibet. The United States also raised serious concerns with China over its support to Russia's defense industry base. The Secretary of State said they are carefully looking at interference by China in US elections and it's totally unacceptable to them. Bangladesh and Thailand on Friday signed five bilateral documents for visa exemption, cooperation on energy, tourism and custom matters and negotiation of free trade agreement between the two countries. The documents are agreement on visa exemption for holders of official passport, memorandum of understanding on energy cooperation, memorandum of understanding on cooperation and mutual assistance in customs matters, MOU on cooperation in the field of tourism and LOI to commence negotiation on a free trade agreement by this year 2024. Meanwhile, Bangladesh Foreign Minister Hassan Mahmood, who is accompanying the visiting Prime Minister on Thailand tour, said in Bangkok that Bangladesh and Thailand have expressed willingness to work together to deal with the Rohingya issues as the two countries are sheltering the Rohingyas who fled from Myanmar.
Egypt has sent a high-level delegation to Israel on Friday this week to broker a new vision for a prolonged ceasefire with Hamas in Gaza. According to an Egyptian official, Egypt's top intelligence official, Abbas Kamel, is leading the delegation. The official said that the talks will also focus on a limited exchange of hostages held by Hamas and return of displaced Palestinians with minimum restrictions. On the other hand, Lebanon's militant Hezbollah group yesterday fired anti-tank missiles and RT shells into Israeli military convoy in a disputed area along the border. And now for the segment where we see the events that unfolded itself this week back in history. 21st April 2002 French elections held. French President Jacques Chirac faced a re-election challenge on this day in 2002 from extremist Jean-Marie Le Pen in the first round of presidential voting but in two weeks later handily defeated him to win a second term. 22nd April 1970 First Earth Day Celebrated First celebrated on this day in 1970 in United States, Earth Day founded by American politician and conservationist Greylord Anton Nelson helped spark the environmental movement and quickly grew into an international event. 23rd April 1993 Voting for Eritrea's independence On this day in 1993, after a long history of foreign rule and decades of war, the small East African country of Eritrea began three days of voting on a referendum to make official its independence from Ethiopia. 24th April 2005 Installation of Pope Benedict XVI On this day in 2005, Pope Benedict XVI, Joseph Ratzinger, Successor to John Paul II formally assumed his position as the new leader of Roman Catholic Church during Mass in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. 25th April 1990 Hubble Space Telescope sent into orbit the Hubble Space Telescope, a sophisticated optical observatory built in the United States under the supervision of NASA, was placed into operation this day in 1990 by the crew of the Space Shuttle Discovery. 26th April 1986 Chernobyl Nuclear Accident a devastating environmental catastrophe occurred early this morning in 1986 when an explosion and a fire at Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine released large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere. 27th April 1961 Independence for Sierra Leone Sierra Leone, which for years had been a British colony and a protectorate achieved independence within the British Commonwealth. Sir Milton Margi served as the first Prime Minister. Well, that's all friends for this week's updates. See you soon next Sunday on the same channel.